Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 14th of September. Indian PM Modi meets Bhutan's king in New Delhi to boost ties. Pakistani porters left without work as floods force train suspensions. And Taliban says 40 rebel force members killed in northern Panjshir. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday met the King of Bhutan, Jigme Khesar Namgyel Wangchuk in New Delhi and discussed issues of mutual interest to boost bilateral cooperation. The visit comes as Bhutan is grappling with the effects of soaring oil and grain prices due to Russian-Ukraine war and the continued impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday met the King of Bhutan, Jigme Khesar Namgyal Wangchuk in New Delhi and discussed issues of mutual interest to boost bilateral ties. There are a number of institutional and diplomatic mechanisms between the neighbouring countries in areas such as security, border management, trade, transit and development cooperation. Bhutan is important to India because it acts as a buffer state between India and China. Earlier on Tuesday, Bhutan also ratified the International Solar Alliance Framework Agreement, India's foreign ministry informed. On Wednesday, King Wangchuk also held talks with Indian Foreign Secretary Vinay Quatra and National Security Advisor Ajit Doval in New Delhi. The visit comes as Bhutan, the country of fewer than 800,000 people nestled between China and India, is grappling with the effects of soaring oil and grain prices caused by the Russia-Ukraine war and the continued impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, including a strict zero-COVID policy that has barred foreign tourists for the past two years. The kingdom is expected to open its borders for tourists from September 23 onwards. As many as 11 people died and at least 25 were left injured after a minibus plunged into a deep gorge in Punch district of India's Jammu and Kashmir on Wednesday. The Indian Army immediately reached the spot for rescue operations and rushed the injured passengers to hospitals for treatment. At least 11 people were killed and 25 others injured after a minibus they were travelling in fell into a gorge in Poonch district of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir territory on Wednesday. The bus reportedly carrying 36 passengers was travelling from Mandi to Sajja area of the district where the accident took place. The Indian Army reached the spot to carry out rescue operations after which the injured passengers were rushed to the hospital for treatment. Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha announced an ex gratia of nearly 6,295 US dollars each for the family members of the deceased and also directed authorities to provide the best treatment to those injured. <laughs> Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi took to social media and expressed his condolences to the bereaved families and wished a speedy recovery to those injured. India has the world's deadliest roads, the result of a flood of untrained drivers, inadequate law enforcement, badly maintained highways and cars that fail modern crash tests. In news from Pakistan, porters and tea stall owners at railway stations in Pakistan have said they are struggling with most train services suspended following floods that have ravaged large swathes of the South Asian nation. The death toll due to the calamity surpassed 1,400 on Wednesday. Workers at a railway station in Pakistan on Tuesday said they were struggling with train services suspended following floods that have ravaged large swathes of the South Asian nation. 
Allah Baks, a porter in Hyderabad in hard hit Sindh province, said his family is facing starvation, while a tea stall owner said he had to ask his child to drink a glass of water for breakfast, with the lack of passengers leaving him without income. Pakistan Railways have said the resumption of passenger train operations would depend on the receding water over and along the rail tracks. अगर नहीं चली तो हमारे घर में इस टाइम में फाके चल रहे हैं अगर बजा इसके बाद लेट हो गई नहीं चली तो हमारे बच्चों का नुकसान हो जाएगा बच्चे चले जाएंगे हमारे हमारी हुकूमत को भी अपील है आप मीडिया वालों को भी अपील है कि हमारे गरीबों की मदद करें Meanwhile elsewhere in Sindh fishermen in Sevan town rushed to construct new boats to keep up with fresh demand due to widespread floods in the area Land where vehicles and cattle driven wagons traveled just a few weeks ago are now submerged under vast expanses of flood water. Boats have become the main mode of transport ferrying people and belongings to safety. Hum kis tarah se liye bana rahe hain jo hamare log hain bahut phase hue hain manchhar mein hum bhi mala hai main bhi unke biradari ka hu hamare log bahut pareshan hai hum kis tarah jaldi bana kar unko bhej denge ki wo nikal sake. The floods from record monsoon rains and glacial melt in the mountainous north have affected 33 million people across Pakistan and killed over 1400 washing away homes roads railways livestock and crops in damage estimated at 13 billion US dollars The work charged employees of the electronic department in Pakistan administered Kashmir recently observed a hunger strike against non-payment of salaries and to demand regularization they blamed people in the illegally occupied region do not have access to equal rights and have to face exploitation work charged employees of the electronic department in pakistan administered kashmir recently staged a hunger strike in front of the office of the chief engineer electronics over non payment of salaries for the past several months and to demand regularization The workers said their children's education has been affected as some of them have been forced to drop out due to the non-payment of fees. They expressed that they are unable to buy them any books and feed their families properly. They said that if the Pakistan government does not pay heed to their demands they will be forced to die by suicide. तो सीधी की जा रही थी ना ही हमें तनखाएँ दी जा रही थी हमारे बच्चों की ये सूरत हाल है कि वो भूख हड़ताल से पाकर कशी पे स्कूलों से निकाल दिए गए उनकी छः छः आठ आठ माह की फीसें बकाए हैं जिसकी वजह से ना तो उनकी तो हम किताबें ले सके ना उनको खाने के लिए कोई दे सके ऐसे घर रहने से फिर हमने सोचा कि इस रोज़ रोज़ घर में जाते थे बेजत होते थे ना बच्चों के सामने उनके लिए खाने के लिए कुछ था ना हमारे पास देने के लिए कुछ है तो हमने इस बेबसी के आलम में हम आके इधर बैठ गए The protesters blamed that this is not the case in Pakistan where scores of employees have been regularized as per the previous legislation but the people in the illegally occupied region still do not have access to equal rights and have to face exploitation In news from Afghanistan the Taliban said on Tuesday that their forces had killed 40 rebel force members including four commanders in Afghanistan's Panjshir province The Taliban has in the past denied widespread fighting saying they have established control of the entire country. The Taliban on Tuesday said that they had killed 40 rebel force members including four commanders in the northern Afghan province of Panjshir. The Taliban proclaimed victory over the province in September 2021 weeks after they took over the capital Kabul as foreign forces withdrew. Resistance group have since said that they have been carrying out operations in the area and clashing with Taliban fighters. The Taliban has in the past denied widespread fighting, saying they have established control of the entire country. Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid said in a tweet on Tuesday that due to a clearance operation against rebels in Panjshir province, 40 have been killed including four commanders and 100 more have been arrested. The National Resistance Front, a group opposing the Taliban which has in the past claimed activity in the area, did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Located just north of the capital Kabul, Panjshir is one of the smallest of Afghanistan's 34th provinces. It played a critical role in the resistance against Soviet occupation in the 1980s and was the center of resistance against the Taliban when it ruled Afghanistan from to 1996 to 2001 moving on to news from nepal 
China's top legislator Li Zanshu held meetings with Nepali leadership, including Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba, on Tuesday to boost bilateral cooperation. Li, who ranks number three in the Chinese Communist Party, also expressed concern over rising U.S. influence in the Himalayan nation. Chairman of the Standing Committee of China's National People's Congress, Li Zanshu, held meetings with Nepal's top political leadership, including Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba on Tuesday in Kathmandu to boost bilateral cooperation. A statement by Nepal's foreign ministry said PM Deoba and Li discussed matters including bilateral trade, investment, connectivity, return of Nepali students to China, resumption of passenger flights and reopening of border ports, among others. The Chinese side appreciated Nepal for its stand on one China policy and its commitment not to allow the Nepali territory to be used against China's interests, it said. Li, who ranks number three in the Chinese Communist Party, also met former prime ministers, CPN UML chairman KP Sharma Oli and chief of CPN Maoist Center Pushpakamal Dehel, during which reports suggest he raised concern over increasing U.S. influence in the context of Washington providing aid grant to upgrade Nepal's infrastructure. Lee also held delegation-level talks with Nepal's Foreign Minister Narayan Khadka. Earlier on Monday, he signed a six-point memorandum of understanding with Nepal's Parliament Speaker Agni Prasad Sapkota, according to which both countries would exchange information on each other's legislative, supervisory and governance practices. India is all set to welcome cheetahs, the large carnivores which went extinct in the country in 1952 with a team of experts in Namibia making preparations for their translocation, most likely within this month. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit the National Park on his 72nd birthday and launch the Cheetah Reintroduction Project. India is gearing up to welcome cheetahs that had gone extinct in the country but were scheduled to be reintroduced on Saturday after the arrival of the first batch from Namibia to central Madhya Pradesh state. The world's fastest land animal was declared extinct in India in 1952, reportedly due to poaching and habitat loss. But with government's decision to reintroduce the animal, eight cheetahs, including five females and three males, will be translocated from Namibia to Kunu National Park, an official of National Tiger Conservation Authority, NTCA, said. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will visit the national park on his 72nd birthday and launch the cheetah reintroduction project. And this is our plan for the whole plan. In that case, this is the 17th time of the यहाँ पे आ जाएंगे चीते हम कार्गो एक चार्टर्ड कार्गो प्लेन हायर करके वेंडहॉक नामीबिया के जो कैपिटल है वहाँ से वो जयपुर आएगा और जयपुर से फिर हेलीकॉप्टर के माध्यम से सीधे वो यहाँ पालपुर में हेलीपैड ऑलरेडी निर्माण हो चुका है और यहाँ पे आएगा और उसके बाद ही उसके रिलीज करने का कार्यक्रम होगा the cheetahs will be kept in quarantine for 30 days and their health will be monitored to know if they are able to acclimatize Spatial enclosures have been also made for the big cats. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. Indian PM Modi meets Bhutan's king in New Delhi to boost ties. Pakistani porters left without work as floods force train suspensions. And Taliban says 40 rebel force members killed in northern Panjshir. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.